Good evening. Welcome to St. James Church and to our celebrations of the third Sunday of Easter. We especially welcome Bishop Lucia, who will be presiding over our liturgy, at which 19 members of our community will receive the Sacrament of Confirmation. Let us now pray the National Eucharistic Revival Prayer found in the back of the music sheet. I don't know if it is. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who promised to stay with us always until the end of the age. Reawaken our wonder at his presence in the most holy Eucharist. May our hearts burn within us as he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Give us the eyes of faith to recognize his presence in our brothers and sisters, especially in the face of the poor and suffering. Nourished by the Eucharist, send us forth to walk faithfully as missionary disciples, great the gospel to every heart and extending your kingdom to every land. We ask this through Christ our Lord, amen. singing Come Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's good to be with you. If we're starting a couple minutes late, it's only because I didn't know about the bridge. I consider myself that I know the area pretty well, and I got to the bridge, I'm like, okay, this is not going to work today. <laughs> so, but it is good to be with you all. On this special day, not only as we celebrate the Lord's Day, as we once again come to know the Lord Jesus and the breaking of bread, but also in a particular way as the Lord pours out upon these young people that gift of the Holy Spirit. A gift that we pray will also be stirred into flame in each one of our lives. To prepare ourselves then to enter into these sacred mysteries, we acknowledge those times we have not lived on in God's love, we seek the Lord's pardon and strength. Lord Jesus, 
You sent the Holy Spirit to be our advocate and guide, Lord of mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to bring peace to a world marred by sin, Christ of mercy. Lord Jesus, you sent the Holy Spirit to guide us to eternal life, Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. Gloria, Gloria, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people, to people of goodwill. We praise you, we praise you, bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we glorify you, we give you. Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sins of the world and mercy on us. Who take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer for you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. Lord of the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. May your help, may your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death, but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord.
Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew, renew the face of the His name, happy the way of the Lord. How manifold are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Set forth your Dust. But when you send forth your spirit, my God, they are created and renew the face of the earth. Send forth your spirit. reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous one, he is expiation for our sins. And not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory 
the two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it's I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They, give, they gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and Psalms might, must be fulfilled. Then he, opens, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it's written, that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Your Lordship, Bishop Lucia. On behalf of the community of St. James, on behalf of the younger ones that are ready to receive the sacrament of their confirmation tonight, and on my own behalf, I'd like to say to you again, welcome to St. James's community. Our younger ones have looked forward to this day. They have prepared themselves, gone through the various activities that are required of them in order or in preparation to receive this sacrament of confirmation. And I would like to say to you that they are ready. They are ready. And we are glad that you are here to pray for them, to pray with them, and extend your hands so that they may receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that will continue to guide them as they witness the faith that they received in their childhood, the faith that we all profess. Once again, Bishop, Welcome to St. James's community. Well, it is good to be here. Now, you guys aren't nervous tonight, right? Is nobody's nervous? That's good. Because I'm going to put this right here, and I'm trusting nobody's going to be too nervous that they're going to kick the stand. All right? Peace be with you. There's the response, but that was Jesus' greeting that we heard in tonight's gospel. It's also the greeting we heard in last week's gospel. And what Jesus meant by that greeting, not only to his apostles, but to each one of us, is that he wants us to know tonight that he is there for us, that he is here for us. John's gospel last week was all about believing, inviting Thomas to believe that Jesus had risen. But it's interesting because we might say, well, tonight's gospel is similar 
But really, tonight's gospel is more about convincing. Convincing the apostles again that Jesus is alive and real. That is not just their memory playing a trick on them. Nor is Jesus a haunting ghost that we need to be afraid of. But that Jesus is alive and that he's tangible in a bodily form. And what does that mean for you and me particularly tonight? That Jesus is alive and well and that he's present in bodily form. Well, it means in particular that he can still give us gifts. And tonight, in a particular way, he wants to share with you the gift of the Holy Spirit. And this gift of the Holy Spirit is meant in a particular way to help you. To help you as you are invited also to continue to pass on God's word. As I was reading a commentary on tonight's gospel reading, this is what it says. It is reassuring to note that the disciples do not react with immediate joy when they first encounter the risen Christ. Their response, their response instead is to be startled and terrified. We too do not always react with wholehearted joy when we encounter Jesus. He often comes to us in unexpected ways and asks us for sacrifices we don't want to make. But Jesus' response is to offer reassurance. Let me say that again to you tonight. Jesus' response is to offer reassurance. He has the disciples look more closely, showing them the wounds he endured on the cross and eating in front of them to reassure them that he is not a ghost, they fear he is. Jesus responds to our hesitation with the same reassurance. He always invites us to come closer, to see more fully who he is and what he's doing. And when we do, when we finally see him well enough, our response will echo the disciples amazement and joy. And note, in particular, that not only tonight do we see more closely in our gospel who Jesus is, that he's real, that he's alive, but also helps us to see more closely who we are in God's eyes that you and I matter to God. <coughs> Excuse me. That's why we're here tonight. And you know, with confirmation, I'd like you to consider four words. And the first word tonight, as you come closer to Jesus, is that the first word we hear is that you are anointed. That tonight, as I anoint you with the sacred chrism, and notice what that word chrism sounds like. It sounds like the word Christ. And literally, Christ means the anointed one. So tonight, first and foremost, as you are anointed with the sacred chrism, you are being reminded that you are God's anointed one. That each one of you by name has been called by God and you are precious to God. And believe me, what's most important is God doesn't make a mistake and God doesn't make junk. And that's something we always need to remember in this world today. 
that each one of us has been called by God. And that, that sacred chrism that I use is meant to be a seal. And another word for seal is stamp. And now, one version of a stamp, and if you go to get your birth certificate, usually there's a seal on it, a stamp on it. Or you get your baptismal certificate, there's a seal on it or stamp on it. You know what that means? It's official. Now, in this country, we don't use stamps too much. Probably the two times I see like a seal on something is either on a church document or on a marriage license or I said on a birth certificate. But I can tell you in other countries, if you don't have a seal or a stamp on it, they don't look at it as official. In fact, I just had been requested a letter that was meant to be sent to, the, to Lord's France, and they had forgot to put my seal on it. The letter came back, and they asked me to put my seal on the letter so that they knew it was official. Well, tonight, first of all, it's official. You are God's beloved sons and daughters. But also what happens, notice that another word for seal is stamp. What also happens when something is stamped? You put a stamp on something. What else happens to that sometimes? Where else might it end up? In the what? Oh, come on, the U.S. Postal Service isn't going to like this. It ends up in the mail. It, gets, it ends up being sent. And that's the other symbol tonight, that as you and I are reminded of your anointedness, as you are reminded that you are being sealed and stamped, it also means that you're being marked. Notice what happens when a stamp, a letter is stamped. What also does it get? It gets marked, usually where it's being sent from. Well, tonight, you're being marked. And you're being marked as having a special purpose in God's eyes. And you're being sent on a mission. So those are the other two words that go together. Marked and mission. You're being marked and mission tonight in this sacrament. And you might ask me, well, Bishop Doug, what am I being marked for? What am I being missioned for? Well, let me share with you a little story about a, of a young man by the name of John. And John was the class clown. And so one day in class, sister asked the question, what's the most important part of the Mass? And of course, first the kids are really thinking about it. But then, like, nobody's hands going up. So sister asked the question again. Well, whose hand goes up but John's? And of course, Sister Mary Margaret is like, oh no. What is he going to say? And so she's almost like, anybody else? But no, John's hand's up there. So sister goes like, okay, John, what's the most important part of the Mass? John stands up at his desk and very proudly says, Sister, the most important part of the Mass is the dismissal rite. And sister looks at him, are you being a wise guy? And he goes, no, no. Well, why did you say the dismissal rite? Because, sister, that's the moment when you and I go out and we live the Mass. That is when you and I go out and we are Christ to those around us. That is what the meaning of this sacrament is all about. And I have one other example for us tonight. Anybody know who this is? She's a recent movie star. Anybody know who this is? You guys? Go ahead. Not Mother Mary, but you're close. She has mother in her name. 
Say it again. Mother Cabrini. Mother Cabrini. This is Mother Cabrini, who just had a movie made about her life. But you know what's very interesting about Mother Cabrini? Mother Cabrini says her life dedicated to God didn't begin because didn't begin when she was finished high school and got her high, high school diploma. Her, her call to, her real feeling to be called by God didn't begin on the day of her first communion. But she said that her calling to go out and serve God's people came on the day of her confirmation. That's when she began to think about how can I serve my brothers and sisters? And what's interesting about her life is Mother Cabrini, at least as a young person, wasn't very healthy. And so she actually was not accepted in two or three religious communities. But what did happen is finally she says, well, enough of this, I'm going to find my, found my own. And she founded the Missionary Sisters of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. But what is so significant about this, and I'm going to look up at my, I did write the statistics, statistics down, but Mother Cabrini died at the age of 67. And she first founded her first convent when she was 27 years of age. When she died at the age of 67, there were 67 convents that she had founded which took care of orphans, which, which established hospitals, which took care of immigrants, not just in Italy, but here in the United States and in Argentina and in other parts of the world. And what is so interesting, as some might know, but when she, she did come to this country as an immigrant, and she became a US citizen. So she is our first American saint. And what's very interesting, like I say, her whole, her whole call to follow God began on the day of her confirmation. So I want to leave you with these words that were spoken about Mother Cabrini. The words were this. Now remember, she was sickly. She had her health problems. So this, this is what Pope Pius XII actually said. Where did she acquire all that strength and the inexhaustible energy by which she was able to perform so many good works and to surmount so many difficulties. She accomplished all this through the faith that was always vibrant in her heart, through the divine love that burned within her, and finally through the constant prayer by which she was closely united to God. She never let anything turn her aside from striving to please God and to work for his glory for which nothing aided by grace seem too difficult or beyond human strength. In other words, like our Mother Mary, Mother Cabrini could say, how can this be? And when you and I remember Jesus, or remember the angel's answer to Mary, it was, the power of the Most High will come upon you. Tonight, my sisters, my brothers, that same power of the Most High is coming upon you in the gift of the Holy Spirit. Like our Mother Mary, like Mother Cabrini, and other sisters and brothers who we call saints, you and I can have the strength to get out of that locked upper room and to go out to the world to tell the good news of Jesus Christ through the gift you received tonight. So my final word to you is, don't forget to unwrap it. Don't forget to unwrap it. Because remember, tonight I pray that the Holy Spirit comes upon you. 
and I'm not going to quiz you right now, but you all know there are other gifts involved. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge, fear of the Lord, courage. So don't forget to unwrap the gift because like Mother Cabrini shows us, there's a lot we can do then to help others know Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to ask our candidates to please stand. If you face me right here. Dear brothers and sisters, the gift of the Holy Spirit which you are about to receive will be a spiritual seal by which you will be conformed to Christ and will be made more fully members of his church. For Christ himself anointed by the Holy Spirit in the baptism he received from John was sent forth for the work of his ministry to pour out on earth the fire of that same Spirit. Therefore, you who are already baptized will now receive the power of his Spirit and be signed with a cross on your foreheads. And so you must always bear witness to his passion and resurrection before the world so that your manner of life, as the Apostle says, may be in every place the pleasing fragrance of Christ. Be living members of his church, and under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, seek to serve all people like Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. And now, before you receive the Spirit, call to mind the faith which you professed in baptism, or which your parents and God's parents professed with the church. And since it is the Lord's Day, I'm going to invite all the assembly to please rise and to join our young people in the renewal of our baptismal promises. So I ask everyone, do you renounce Satan and all his works and empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who today, through the sacrament of confirmation, is given to these young people in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost? I do. And do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. I'm going to invite our candidates to please kneel. So, dearly beloved, let us pray to God, the Almighty Father, for these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life and baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing, conform them more fully to Christ, the Son of God.
Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The assembly may be seated, and I invite our candidates now to rise. Paul, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Saint Owen. Owen. Owen, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Michael, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. What name have you taken? Augustine. August, Augustine, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. James, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. George, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. David. Huh? Stephen. Oh, Stephen, excuse me. Stephen, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Claire, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you so much. Albertus. Albertus, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Dominic, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Thank you. Come close up. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. David, yeah. David, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you very much. Sebastian, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you.
Luke, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Jacob, Jacob, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you very much. Rose, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. James, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Thank you. Come close up. Cole. 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 Cole, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Let us stand in prayer. Placing our trust in the Holy Spirit, the advocate whom Jesus promised, let us address our needs through the Holy Spirit to the Father. For the Pope, Bishop Lucia, and all the clergy, may God continue to bless and sanctify them in their service to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For world leaders, may the Lord grant them the humility to be guided by his word. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the newly confirmed of our community, that they may be given the grace to witness Christ using the gifts of the Holy Spirit they have received. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That this community of faith may grow in holiness and a spirit of thanksgiving through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, may the healing presence of Jesus transform their lives for the better. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the light of faith, especially Margaret Shuba and Mary Zielowitz, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may be at peace in God's heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our parish book of intentions and the attentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Eternal Father, send forth your spirit to renew the face of the earth. Open our eyes to the presence of the Holy Spirit and help us to walk humbly under his guidance. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, 
of your exultant church and so you have and as you have given her cause for such great gladness grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord amen the Lord be with you and with, and your, with your spirit, spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and never pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord, holy Lord, God of hosts, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and the past your resurrection until you turn your head, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Douglas our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also, Lord, your servants, whom you have been pleased to confirm today by bestowing the Holy Spirit, and keep them, and keep them in your grace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, the Apostle James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the glory, and the And Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another the sign of Christ.
God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Spirit of God, who dwells in me, open my eyes that I may see. Come, fill my heart and make me whole.
come Holy Spirit and set me free to be all, all that I Oh! 
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of announcements I have to make before we conclude our liturgy. The first one is that uh, nomination, paper, nomination paperwork for parish council members is available for you out in the back in the church vestibule. Please pick one and nominate a member that can serve on the parish council. A faithful feast will be this Sunday at 3 p.m. in Owens Hall. And do not forget to take the bulletin because there's all the detailed information that you need to know of what's happening in our own parish here at St. James. Again, on your behalf, allow me to extend our sincere gratitude to Bishop Lucia for being in our midst today and presiding over our liturgy and extending a prayer where the young ones receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Bishop, thank you. Thank you very much. And please, you're welcome to St. James anytime. This is your home. Please feel free to come anytime you feel like being here in our community. I'd also like to extend our sincere gratitude to all those who help the young people in their preparation towards this particular day of receiving the sacraments So the catechists. Thank you very much. John D'Angelo and the choir, thank you for leading us in the song today. The ushers, as always, we are grateful for your ministry, our community, and those who are bringing the Eucharist to our brothers and sisters who are sick. We thank you that you do that on our behalf, and please bring them our love as well. The young people that proclaim the liturgy of the word to us this evening, thank you. And friends of mine that took care of the altar today and the supervision of our seminarian, Cornelius, thank you very much. Thank you, the young ones. So I think now more than ever, we want to encourage our young people to open the gift they have received, but also to offer them our congratulations and our prayers. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bow our heads and pray for God's blessing. Confirm, O oh God, what you have brought about in us, and preserve in the hearts of your faithful the gifts of the Holy Spirit. May they never be ashamed to confess Christ crucified before the world, and by devoted charity may they ever fulfill his commands, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Thanks be to God. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I watch as I did.